What's challenging about the polar regions in general is that we don't have enough data. So the traditional way to do science in anywhere polar that's hard to get to is you either, either put up a scientific base, um, which is great because then you have the logistics, you have, you have a base, but you're also tied to it. Um, alternatively, you could use a ship, but that's very expensive. So what we're doing that's different is we're, we're using ships of opportunity and yachts and foot to get around, whatever we can. And we leave stuff in place. So we leave time-lapse camera, time-lapse audio um, that does most of the work of what a biologist would. But that lasts all winter. It's there before we can get in in spring. And it's working much harder than we can 24-7. So we can set these so that they're, they're almost permanently recording what the penguins are doing. I mean, the, the, the largest penguin colony in the world is 1.2 million and it's never visited. Uh, you don't see it on TV, it's completely unmonitored. Um, so the scale of what's out there is still staggering and is still uh, surprising. Antarctica is 48 times the size of the UK twice the size of the US. Um, over winter that doubles with the sea ice as the sea freezes. In terms of remoteness, it totally depends. It's more time rather than distance. When you're on a tour ship, you're two days from the tip of South America. And some of the remote islands, you're easily eight days from help. And of course, then no one's gonna come and help you, or if the weather changes, that's it, you're cut off. That means a lot of medical training. Um, we spend a lot of time sorting out communications and weather reports and things like that, and, and really looking out for the other members of your team in a, in a very harsh environment. It's a challenge and a joy being that remote, both personally and scientifically. I mean, scientifically I'm going there because it's not been done, and personally that's very exciting. Uh, we've been doing it for four years. A lot of that has been trial and error. Um, we've buried cameras in snow drifts, we've had rock falls. Uh, we've definitely got it right now. <laughs> um, but the insights we're starting to get are uh, a lot more what penguins do over winter. Uh, so a lot more behavioural observations that we didn't have. And we're starting to finally get the replication where we can detect large scale trends across latitudes. Um, I think one of the things that excites me the most is the link with the past. I mean, you're, you're very much in the, in the footsteps of these, these giants, these explorers. And quite often their anecdotal data or their first observational data is what we're trying to repeat, but with a lot more detail and over a lot more sites. The problem is we then have far too much data. So we're engaging the public um, because they're interested and because they can help. And then we're, we're also uh, getting people to adopt those colonies so every time they do that, that pays for another one and it pays forward. So we're really filling in the gaps of these huge gaps in polar, polar monitoring.